In this video, we'll be talking about tabular integration. So the way it works is we're going to have a function, we'll call it f, and another function g. Okay, so we're going to integrate f of x times g of x. I'm going to select f of x to be a function that I'm going to be taking the derivative. So something that's easy to take the derivative, usually. Um, so let's say, for example, we'll call it f. And then you're going to be taking derivatives all the way down. Usually, you're going to select this to be um, a polynomial, like x to the n. And you would stop all the way down till it's 0. And then you would select your function, let's say, g of x. And then you would just take the integral of that every time. The next step, you would multiply the diagonals. So the first one will have a positive. So it would just be f times the integral of g of x. Okay, and then you would multiply the next diagonal, and this will be minus. So it alternates signs. So it'll be minus f prime of the double integral of g of x. And then if we go one more step, This will be plus now because it changes sign. So we plus the second derivative of f uh, times the triple integral of g of x, etc. And at the end, you're going to multiply these two. So and that's going to be inside the integral. So it's going to be zero times, you know, whatever the other function is. So this is if you select f of x to be um, a polynomial. Sometimes when you're doing integration by parts, you can have a, a function where it's a not a polynomial. So for example, like sine of x and e to the x. So if, let's say if I was integrating sine of x and e to the x. Whenever you take the derivative, you never go down to 0. So in that case, what you would have to do is um, end up basically with this. So you would have to go somewhere down here where you would basically have f of x again and g of x. Now it could be like positive or negative, you know, a plus or minus, whatever. And it could be a constant. I guess we can put a constant. But that's the only difference. It could be either a positive or negative version of it, and it could be multiplied by a constant. So you would have to stop it over here. You no longer would go, because it goes basically in a loop. So we'll see uh, an example on that. The first thing I want to start with, though, is a polynomial. So a simple polynomial times a trig function. So we'll say x to the fifth times sine of x. So whenever you're dealing with a polynomial and a trig function, you want to choose um, the polynomial to be your f of x. And then your g of x will just be your sine. And for the f of x column, we're just going to be taking the derivative all the way down to 0. And then the g of x column, we're going to be taking the antiderivative. So what's good, though, with this, we can just work backwards. Um, so if you go backwards, you're taking the antiderivative. So right now, we're in negative cosine, and we're over here, going back to negative sine. So you're just working your way backwards, um, counterclockwise. And actually, I need one more step to go to 0. OK. And at this point, we're just going to be looking at the diagonals. So we're going to multiply the first diagonal. 
So it would be negative x to the fifth times cosine of x. Okay, so this one was plus, but then it's going to be minus. So I have a minus and a minus here. So it's two negatives makes it a positive. 5x to the fourth times sine of x. Now go down to the next diagonal. This one will be plus. It'll be 20x cubed times cosine of x. Next diagonal will be minus. It'll be minus 60x squared sine of x. And that'll be plus, but there's a negative here, so that'll turn out to be minus. 120x cosine x. And then this is minus. So this will be two minuses, it'll make it a positive, it'll be 120 sine of x. So uh, this is the answer to the integral of x to the fifth times sine of x dx. So this saves us a lot of time because usually uh, the way we learn integration by parts is by you know making this um, this table and you would have to do this thing a bunch of times. But if you just line it up like this, as you can see, hopefully that this saves a lot of work. All right, let's now look at a different example. This one will be a little similar, but we won't be using a trig function. We'll have x to the fifth, sorry, x to the fourth times e to the negative x. So the idea is the same. We want to choose our f of x and g of x f of x will be our polynomial and we're going to be working all the way down to zero. g of x is in this case e to the negative x so we're just going to take the antiderivative which funny enough it's really the same thing as the derivative. Okay. All right we have that so we're just looking at diagonals. So multiply the first diagonal. This one will be a plus, but I have a minus here, so that's going to be negative. The next diagonal will be minus. So this one will be 4x cubed e to the negative x, and that'll be plus, but this again is a minus. Next diagonal, you have minus. And this is wrong. This should be a 24. And this should be a 0. Okay, so that one would be plus, but this is a minus. So it would be minus 24 e to the negative x. So this is the antiderivative to x to the fourth times e to the negative x. All right, now let's look at when we don't have a polynomial. So let's look at what happens. We're going to use e to the 2x times sine of 3x dx. So this one will be inside the integral. Um, here it doesn't really matter what you select for f of x and g of x. Um, so we're just going to use sine of 3x to be f of x and then g of x will be e to the 2x so again it doesn't matter so we're going to go all the way down until we find basically a sine and an e to the 2x you know some some variation of this with a constant the only difference will be the constant in front. Okay, so let's see. We're going to take the derivative of sine of 3x and then use a chain rule. And then this will just be uh, e to the 2x over 2. This is a negative. 
no, this is derivative. Now it's a negative nine sine three x. And this one would be e to the two x over four. Okay, so now we have to stop because I have a sine three x and a e to the two x. So it's basically the same thing as what we started with, except there's a constant. So we're still gonna be working diagonally. So this one will be plus, it'll be um, e to the 2x over two times sine of three x. The next one will be minus, it'll be minus, uh, we'll say three fourths e to the two x times cosine three x. But we also have an extra step. This is the extra step here. This is gonna be a plus. Okay, so, um, and this is what's gonna be inside the integral. It'll be negative 9 fourths e to the 2x times sine 3x. And keep in mind, this is all equal to um, the integral of e to the 2x times sine 3x. So I can add this to the other side here. So I'll be adding 9 fourths e to the 2x times sine of 3x. So when I add that, I would have um, 13 fourths integral e to the 2x times sine 3x. And that's going to equal e to the 2x over 2 times sine 3x minus 3 fourths e to the 2x times cosine 3x. My goal here is to have in the integral of e to the 2x times sine 3x by itself. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 4 over 13. be e to the 2x sine 3x and then let's see this will be 2e to the 2x over 13 sine 3x minus 3 over 13 e to the 2x cosine 3x and for all these problems um, we should be adding a constant which I haven't been doing but that's your final answer.